Hello, everyone, and welcome to Dimes with Dara on the Joy Slot Podcast, brought to you by irsportsdaily.com. I'm your host, Greg Flamong. We've got another fun interview today. A uh, former Notre Dame basketball player and current WNBA star Marina Mabry. We're going to talk to her about her time at Notre Dame, her professional career, uh, winning a national title in 2018, and growing up in the Mabry family, which is basically basketball royalty uh, for the uh, University of Notre Dame. So we're going to talk to them about all that. A couple other things I want to talk to you guys about. Um, just released a, a podcast with Sonia Citron, the current Notre Dame guard. Talked about growing up as a, a young athlete. Talk about uh, her recruiting, uh, you know, her recruiting uh, experience, meeting Dara Mabry, meeting her teammates, you know, get, getting accustomed to being a uh, kind of a big time player at the University of Notre Dame. And then, um, you know, on the current season as well. So check that out. Just did a, a Hit and Hustle show with Jamie Uyama and Mike Goolsby. We released that on Tuesday. So you're going to want to check that out as well if you haven't done so already. And uh, subscribe to this channel, like this show, and um, hit the notification bell so whenever it is. We are, are, we are releasing a video for you to watch. Um, got a lot of fun, exciting stuff going on. And uh, also some exciting things is we want to thank our sponsors as always. Uh, one of which is ESQ Clothing, which is founded by Notre Dame alum Ga Wang. You've seen ESQ on all your favorite Notre Dame players and coaches. With over a decade of making the best custom clothing available, ESQ will help you look and feel your best in 2024. Uh, from a perfect fitting suit or sport coat, shirt or bomber jacket, that perfect tuxedo for wedding season, check out Ga's amazing work at esqclothing.com and book an appointment to upgrade your wardrobe today. Mention ISD and get 10% off your entire purchase. And our other uh, sponsor that I want to thank for sponsoring this show and this channel is VSR Media, uh, which is founded by Notre Dame pregame football host and Emmy Award winning anchor Vahid Saad Razade. VSR Media provides professional and cinematic video and photo. Whether you're looking for a collegiate or pro level highlight reel, have a personal story to tell or or are aiming to diversify and grow your business. VSR Media specializes in short and long form video storytelling, social media management and website design. VSR Media also captures professional headshots, senior, and sports photos. Contact them at vsrmediacompany.com. Mention Sports Daily to receive 20% off your first project. Visit them online or give them a call at 574-800-9106. Let's get to uh, Sisters Mabry. All right, we're here with Marina Mabry and Dara Mabry, uh, my co-host, as always. Uh, lovely to have Sisters Mabry on the show today. Uh, Marina Mabry, 2018 national champion, current WNBA star, and uh, the, the holder of the second most three-pointers made in, in, in the Mabry family of, of the ladies. So happy to be on the show. Thank, thank you for being here, Marina. Thanks for having me. Quick little jab. I got that one, but congrats. Great intro. Perfect. <laughs> great intro I guess, uh, straight right away i had to uh i had to uh, i had to do that it's uh, the first time uh maria and I, or dara and i ever recorded she, uh, we were talking about that because i was telling her because i looked at her her bio on on the notre dame website and it said the most three pointers and i said yeah and then she said marina would say uh i did it in five years bravo uh, dara and- <laughs> that's true but I, I i would point out to to everyone listening dara did it in less games less games played i, I think that's important so she still beat me it's all right dara <laughs> i'm proud i wouldn't want anybody to take the throne if it wasn't you <laughs> <laughs> so um as we can see very very competitive household here and uh dara i i've, I've gotten a kind of a taste of the um her uh her vibe the way that she you know like texting with her during Notre Dame games uh she's very fiery she's very uh she's very competitive and she gets that fire um you I I, in my research you Marina you kind of have a reputation for that would you say that she gets it from you does she get it from uh your older brother uh your older sister uh where does that come from is it just something between the two of you or is it something that um you know is within the whole family I think like a big part of our family was like becoming your own person and Mm. having, you know, your own personality. And I feel like Dara is very fiery, but also really sweet underneath it all. Like wants more for others than just herself. So um, I know the real version of Dara, you know, the deep down. I won't expose her right now, but (laughs) we could say the same thing about you. 
I know, but I was just saying, like, you know, you're your own person. Like, I feel like, yeah, we all have similarities, but she's special in her own way. Like, she's super competitive, but also has this, like, nature for making people feel welcome around her and making people feel like the best version of themselves when they're around little Durla. That that sounds like a lot what, what Sonia Citron said yesterday about Dara. And just Sonia, like how she Sonia, led the Sonia. Team. <laughs> how she yeah. how she how she kind of led the team. Um Dara, you're you're not the youngest, right? You're you're second youngest in the family, but uh coming up, um, you know, you said you were on your sister's AAU basketball teams, but you didn't you didn't play as much, obviously, because you were younger. But what was that like having having two sisters and an older brother who just kind of look up to they kind of set the standard and, and wanting to meet that standard and, and, you know, go on in your basketball career? It was fun. Um, it was always very entertaining. We always had something to do, um, whether that was playing basketball or not playing basketball. But, yeah, I did always have a standard and something to look up to, but I embraced it. Um, sometimes it could get hard, you know, in terms of just being compared to two older sisters who were very good at what they were doing and an older brother as well. Um, but it was fun because it was never like that between the four of us. Um, so there's a lot of external factors, obviously, when you grow up in a household of very, of very successful athletes. But we kind of just embraced it. And like we would joke with each other. Um, I'm better than you. No, you're not. I'm, I'm better than this one, that kind of thing. Um, but it was fun and it was light. Um, and we let it propel us. Uh, so we would go out in the driveway. We would play one on one. Um, we would yell and scream at each other and then we would spend all day together at the beach. So I would say it was a very unique um, environment that we grew up in. Not a lot of people can say that they had five, his, whoa, five siblings who played the same sport. Um, but I was very fortunate. I embraced it. Um, I didn't, I lost a couple inches somewhere along the way. I don't know. I never got past five, six. So I had to try a little bit harder against sisters who had, you know, like six foot wingspans and a, a higher vertical than mine. Um, so I was kind of like the baby um, until Ryan came. So I, I just took it all in and used it to my advantage. And it was really fun. What it's, it was it always basketball for your family. Where did, where did that kind of come from? Uh, you know, obviously once, once uh, Roy is the oldest. And so once he's in it and then Michaela's in it, uh, your older sister, who's a, who's an assistant coach at Notre Dame right now, former Notre Dame basketball player, um, was was it always going to be basketball? Was there ever talk of like, I want to someone's like, I want to try soccer, I want to try volleyball, and everyone's like, no, like that's not allowed. Or like, what was the, uh, what what was it always basketball? What was the situation there? I played soccer for a while, and then I played, uh, I did cross country, and I had a couple days of softball in there, but I wasn't really into it. Yeah. My sister yeah. Michaela played soccer for a while too. Dara, I think you did cross country. Oh, Dara was amazing at cross country. We actually talked about that yesterday uh, oh, on sorry. our podcast yeah. with Sonia. Yeah. Um, I touched on it a little bit. No, it was like mm, there was something sprinkled in here and there. I don't think it ever got past. Michaela played soccer up until eighth grade, which not a lot of people know, but I don't think any of us like did anything different past then. So like when I got to high school, I, I didn't do cross country or track. Um, but we didn't, we never really had the urge to try something else. Um, we were good at basketball. We were talented, figured that out later on. I think we credit Roy because like you, you usually always want to be just like your older sibling. Like you want to copy them um, and do whatever they do and be better at them, better than them at it. Uh, so I think Roy kind of led the way and then Michaela followed and I don't know. We didn't, we didn't have like volleyballs or softballs like lying around the house growing up. So there's never an urge to go try anything else. Um, basketball just was fun to us. Yeah. That's what I was going to say. I feel like we didn't have as much fun doing other stuff. Like sometimes in the backyard, like we would play soccer to switch mm. it up, but like, we didn't have as much fun with it. Like even cross country meets and stuff. Like sometimes one of us would throw like a tantrum before it. Like, no, I don't want to go. But like nobody was having a tantrum, like to go play basketball. 
And obviously yeah, these are young kids I'm talking about, but still. Uh, cross cross country's tough. I mean, that's uh that's that's not it's it's one of those things like you just you gotta like really love it. Cause it I as a kid, like I was a I was a track athlete as a as a young person in, in high school as well, but I was a sprinter. Like anything over like 400 was like, no, I don't want to, like, I don't want to do that. Like I'll, I'll do it as like training, but as like something I'm doing all the time, like that's tough. I, I can see gravitating towards a sport like basketball, it's especially like it's similar to soccer and it's just like continuous play, right? Like there's breaks in the action when there's balls out of bounds or fouls, free throws, things of that nature. But uh, it's continuous game. Like that's why I never got into like baseball. Like I played it as a kid, but it's like the game's I'm just too much standing around. Like I need to be, I need to be moving and, and making cuts yeah. and uh, things of that nature. Um, what was, have you all ever kind of talked about like the appeal of Notre Dame? Like why Notre Dame for all of you? Why did it fit? Um, you know, obviously you, uh, Marina, you mentioned earlier, like you're all your own person, but you all ended up at Notre Dame. Mm -hmm. And, and so what, what appealed to, I guess, to you specifically and then to your family about Notre Dame and wanting to play there? Uh, for me, like, I considered a couple other places, but then when I went on my trip to Notre Dame, I saw like the excellence within the basketball program. And I wanted to have that really high intensity, like really high level program, mm. but with like something else that came with it. Cause all of these other programs that I was looking at, they had great programs too. So I was like, I need something that separates it. And Notre Dame had like that home feeling because I had known the coaches for so long. Mm -hmm. I had known like some of the players and stuff. So it felt like I had a special place there. And that to me was like more drawn. Like I had a sense of protection, family, home there. And you got, to, you got, you had a chance to play with Michaela as, as well, correct? Yeah. I played my freshman season with her. Yeah. So I assume, I assume that helped as well and come, come along with like the family aspect of it. Mm hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it was tough for me. Like I didn't play that much and I was like a really high ranked recruit coming out and you know how college is now, like mm -hmm. they all play a million minutes right away. Mm -hmm. So I think like that was a tough adjustment, but then like to have Mikey there to help me see like the big picture and stuff that helped too. Um, so you did the, the, it all worked out for you, right? 2018 national champions. Um, mm -hmm. I, I don't want to gloss over that, right? Like that is, um, it's obviously a huge thing and not just that, but I, I, I remember watching those, you know, final games in that tournament and look, any, you'll take a championship, however it comes, right? Like however it happens, you'll take it no matter what. Mm -hmm. But I think like to be a part of something like that's, it was an iconic moment in the history of like women's college basketball. It, in, it, frankly, in, in, in college basketball period, I mean, to have two buzzer beaters like that in the final four, uh, one against UConn and not just that, but like they're, they're iconic programs in, in and of themselves, right? Notre Dame versus UConn. Like that was such a huge rivalry, you beat UConn in the final four, and then you beat South Carolina in, in the championship game, uh, to have that moment there. Like, what is that? I guess, what is that feeling in the moment of just like, did you, kind of have an understanding of the gravity or was it just like we won the national championship or you, you're happy about that? Like, did you feel the gravity of the moment kind of when it was happening? I think like, I remember me and Enrique were roommates and we were sitting in mm. there like elite eight and people were saying that we were going to be the only number one seed that didn't advance to the final four. And I remember we were sitting there like, no, we have to win this game. Like we have to win this game, get to the final four. Like there's so many doubters, blah, blah, blah. And then when we got there, it was like, it was never enough to us. I was like, all right, mm. all right, we got UConn coming up. Like we got to, we got to pass them. Okay. We passed them. And I think it gave us all a sense of like family. Like at the end of the game, I had the ball with like, maybe I don't remember how many seconds, but not a lot. And I saw Enrique was wanting it and she had just hit a couple of shots and it was like, all right, I'm going to hand this off to her because she's going to bring us home right now. Mm -hmm she hit it like it was kind of like we knew she was gonna hit it so when she hit it it was really exciting and stuff but then again like it's we still were like okay we got to get this next game like this isn't what we came here for we didn't come here to beat you come we came here to take the trophy like mm -hmm. so then halftime hits of the final four of the final game and we're down like i think it was 15 or 17 
And we couldn't score. Like we couldn't make any baskets. And we, I remember we all sat in there like, all right, we're a second, uh, second half team. Like we can do this. And then we came out there and just kind of chipped away and chipped away. And like, right before we knew it, like we had the game tied and we knew what we were going to do again. Like we had a play drawn up, but then we were like, if they take that away, Ricky, come flash the ball. I'm going to come over here. Like, boom, Jackie hit a big shot at the end. I hit a big shot. And then it was Rike's time to try it again. And like, as soon as it happened, it was like, Oh my God, we just won the national championship. Like, yeah. Oh my God. Cause obviously only one team finishes on top and it's like, Everybody has this dream. Oh, we can make it. We can make it. But you never know how it's going to happen. And it just happened so fast for us that it was like, wow, that was crazy. And it was like one of the best moments of my life. It was so much fun. Like, so cherish that for sure. What was it, uh, Dara? What was it like for you to just kind of be a part of that, right? Like rooting for your sister and, and uh, you know, being there and, and everything that goes along with that. I think it uh... – circles back to what Marina said about the family atmosphere. So I was actually at the game. Um, mm. I sat in the stands where all the Notre Dame parents sat. Um, I don't know if Maddie was there because Catherine was in the game, but like the yeah. West Bells were around um, and just even some familiar faces that we still see at our games today uh, in South Bend. And I think it was a full circle moment for us too, because like Usually you can, like when you're a spectator and you're in the crowd, you can feel like the vibe and stuff and not one parent and not anybody in like with green on or rooting for Notre Dame ever, you know, put their head down or ever stopped encouraging them. Like even the crowd took it one possession at a time. Like it was so cool. And then I still have the video on my phone. Like I remember the anticipation of when Coach McGraw, Coach McGraw called the timeout all of us just kind of sat there. We waited um, and we all stood up at the same time. And when Enrique made the shot, like the team celebrated and then they ran down the court, like to where our fans were and they celebrated <laughs> like right in that area. And it was so cool. Like I, I have a picture on my phone. Um, we should use it for the cover of this specifically. I'll send it to you. And it's a picture of me and Marina celebrating with my mom. And it was so cool. Um, and then now, like I, I played for Notre Dame, I, I got to live up to, you know, that, that excellence and those kind of moments. I mean, I, I haven't had a moment, uh, that compared to Arike and that group right there, but just, it's, it's the same atmosphere and the same kind of feelings, um, that come out of a place like this with a tradition of excellence and a family atmosphere. And then you know, when I'm in Rolf's every day, still like working out or doing rehab, no matter what it is, like I still see Arike, like we have this big picture next to uh, the national championship trophy that they won. And it's Arike, like mid air, like a foot off the ground, taking the shot. And I walk past it every day. And I still think like, I was able to be there and watch them do that and then go play for Notre Dame. So it's just super cool. Um, super cool family thing that I think is a unique experience that I'm, I'm proud of. Yeah. Like you say, you know, you haven't had a moment like that. Like that's the thing. No one has a moment like that. Like mm -hmm. you can't, you yeah. just can't expect that. Like there are so many, and like Mar Mar Marina was just talking about, like, so there are so many great teams that you can go through in the history of college basketball who like, because of the nature of the sport and the way that it works with the tournament, like one bad game and you're out and your season's over and you just can't like I remember that team being like, man, that's a special group. Like it, it just like it had that it had so many pieces to it. And it's just like you hope it works out because you want a group like that to to be able to, you know, lift the trophy at the end. And so for it to have it work out and then for it to have it work out the way that it did um, is like just a super cool moment. Like I know there's like so many fans on Twitter, uh, like talk about it all the time. Like it always comes up the, 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 the video, the shot of comes up with, with the call. Um, and that was another part, like it was a great call by ESPN. So like that kind of heightens it as well. Um, so that was all very cool. All right. Uh, transitioning a little bit, uh, Marina, you, you mentioned before we, we started recording here that, that you're on vacation. So you are back from, from playing uh, professional basketball over in Europe. Uh, how, how did that go? First of all, your, your season, how did it go over there? Uh, it's not over. Uh, I'm oh, on the okay. national team break right now. So everybody kind of goes to their national teams and they compete in the qualifiers. So we had off for like, 
I think there's a 10 to 12 day break um, in between games. So I decided to come back to America and just give myself some time to relax and mm. just chill. Cause like all I do is play all the time. Like I'm going to get back from the playoffs here in Turkey and get right to um, my new season in the WNBA. So just being able to relax and like come see my family is great for me. Yeah. Like I was when, uh, when Dara, when I was talking to her before, like when we started this podcast, I, we, mm -hmm. we had kind of talked and she's like, well, it'll be hard for Marina. Come on. Cause she's, she's in Turkey. Yeah. I'm like, wait, what? Like she plays professionally in Turkey as well. Like when does she ever stop? Like you gotta, but it, I mean, it makes sense, right? Like you, you play for as long as you can. Right. And that's the thing about an athlete too. is like, the, the your your time in as in athletics is kind of like finite like it, it it's athletic ability is a depreciating asset which was i was reminded in my life uh it's something that kind of goes away so you you play for <laughs> as long as you can at a high level for as long as you can um, yeah, so that's yeah. Cool. yeah so when 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 does your uh WNBA season start uh it starts at the end of april okay so so is the, is there like any time in between like do you have like do you do you just go straight from is there any sort of training camp deal or yeah, yeah I'll, I'll be at training camp this year uh the turkish league moved their dates back so that the WNBA players would be able to make it like through prioritization so okay um i'll finish there like like earlier in april and i'll come back for like a week or two and then training camp starts right and so you're uh you're a member of the, the uh, chicago sky right yeah. Um, is that, is that better for you in terms of geographically or does it, does it really matter? As compared to my, well, like, like before you're like, you're in, you're in Dallas, right? So like, right. Dara, like for Dara, it's better because she's in South Bend. It's easier for her to get to games than she's in Chicago. Yeah. That was one of the main reasons that I came to Chicago during free agency. Uh, oh, okay. yeah. Like I, I hadn't been able to play anywhere. In a, in a long time in my career where my family could get there easily. And since obviously a lot of them live in South Bend and like near that area, um, my brother is at Miami of Ohio right now and my parents come out to Chicago all the time. So to me, like it just makes sense. They would be at every game. Like Dara and Michaela were basically at like almost every game. My parents came to a lot of games this year. Like my family was there a lot and it to me like that's something that helps me one perform better and two just like feel like I'm not wasting my years away like working all day every day mm -hmm. and like I don't want to sit down when I'm older and be like dang I wish I had spent more time with my family so to me yeah. it made more than perfect sense to come to Chicago where I can work and have my family there yeah well th i mean it's obviously great like everyone likes to quote unquote come home as as they say and so you're not technically going home but like it's a lot easier for everyone to go see you play um and staying on the subject of like the WNBA, I, I wanted to talk to both of you about um kind of the state of of women's basketball right now just at large right in mm -hmm. in the united states um it, it's one of those things like i don't have a for like my my read on it like my read on it is that it's going through a little, like a good amount of uptick right now in terms of just people noticing people engaging in it uh mm -hmm. you know the like the dara and i talked about like, i think it was a couple weeks ago how i think it was lsu versus uh, south carolina like that game outdrew uh the nba on tnt which is taking place at the same time right I mean, that's a pretty big deal, right? It's like the, the NBA on TNT is like, that's a pretty marquee kind of time slot for them, right? Like they choose these times based on when they think they're going to get max viewership or mm -hmm. a high amount of viewership. Um, they usually choose a marquee game for that. And then the, the, the women's game outdrew them. I feel like that's a pretty good sign, right? Um, and so I'm just, I want to get your view on just kind of the state of women's basketball and where things are right now. And I want Dara to get in there as well. I mean, it's on an upward trend. Like we're pr we're producing a better product. Um, we're getting better TV deals. People are being drawn to superstars, scoring 35, 40, 45, 50 points in games where that wasn't as common. Mm. And I think like for the viewers, that's what they want to see. They want to see dunks. They want to see people scoring a million points. Like, um, 
they don't want to see games that are 62 to 65 anymore. Like that's right. not really their favorite thing to see. So I think we're, we're appealing to the fan base a lot more. And then also the WNBA was young. Like if you look at the NBA back when they were only 25, 26, 27 years old, like, you know, they had work to do too. They had growth to, to make also. So I think us making this growth, like patience is key. Like we're getting more fans. We're getting more of everything. And now it's just a matter of producing a great product over time and being consistent with our marketing. And I think that we're headed in that direction, especially with the two expansion teams. Yeah. What do you think, Dara? Yeah, uh, I completely agree. I, I love it for the women because it's we we commit to the same amount of physical, mental, and emotional exhaustion in in this type of profession as all the other athletes do, including the NBA. Um, and I think that it's it's really important. Um, we have little girls you know that look up to us as role models um because of of what we're doing on a daily basis and it expands way further into that you know people are getting to see these incredible women for way more than what they are um on the court and and what we do bring to our world our generation our society um so i i love that it's growing there is more work to do um but i think that there's a good understanding that it's not just going to happen overnight um there's a lot more that still needs to be done but it is on an upward trend um and this is what women deserve not not just female athletes um women all over the world we still have a lot of work to do but you have to credit credit our audience like you can't say anymore that people don't watch it because they do like the numbers don't lie the stats don't lie anymore um so it's 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 on an upward trend and it's going to keep growing and i'm really excited to see what's going to continue to happen um i feel like we were talking about expanding the WNBA and then all of a sudden we found out that there was a team um, that's going to be in the Bay area. Um, and I just can't wait to see like, even over the next WNBA season throughout the summer, what's going to happen. I think it's going to be really fun from top to bottom. It's going to be a fun time. Who were your role models growing up? Like who did you kind of, for lack of a better way to put it, like want to be? You know, I mean, obviously you have your your older siblings, but like, who who did you look at? Like, who did you say like, oh, I, w- I want to play like this player or I want to be like this player? It could, and I don't, if it's an NBA player, then that's fine too. I, I'm, I'm genuinely curious about that. Mm, I watched a lot of people. Like, I really, I really liked Tiffany Hayes when she was at uh, UConn. Mm. Uh, she was so active and stuff. So I was like, I always wanted to watch her play. Um I liked Simone and Sylvia Fowles at LSU. I was a fan of them. Um, I liked Duke. I watched like Trisha Liston shoot all those threes and stuff. Um, There's like a lot of people. I watched Candace Parker. Um, I used to watch Irie Lotta too from North Carolina. So I think just you got to like, when I was younger, I looked at them. And then once like WNBA, I started to pay attention to them more. Like when I was a little older, um, I liked Chelsea Gray. And then, like, on the guy's side, I, like, I loved Curry. I loved Kyrie. Um, Paul George is really good, too. So just kind of, like, as I got older and evolved, like, I watched different players. Me, too. I'd agree. Um, this is always a hard question for me because I would usually just say Marina because, like, I was fortunate to have a role model um, mm. literally at my fingertips. Uh, But I really liked Kelsey Plum. I watched her at Washington a ton. She was uh, undersized, but super strong. She shot the ball really well, and she was just always moving. And I was like, you know, like when you're undersized, you have to make it up in some way. Um, And even now, I I love watching her. Yeah, I just – I think she's great. Um, I remember I saw her after they played Chicago, I think, and she, like, came up to me and talked to me, and I was like, oh, my God, like, no way. (laughs) <laughs> um so i think she's great um who else uh i really liked bradley beal a lot um i loved watching him i just loved the way he would go score the ball i always thought he was so graceful um in what he was doing and then also on the men's side chris paul in the ball screen was i watched his highlights all the time specifically mm-hmm. in the ball screen because he just He's again undersized, had that thing on a string. So my a lot of my role models were like undersized but superstars. Um, 
so yeah that's my take on that okay uh always curious to know i, I should have I, I'm, I'm annoyed i didn't ask this of sonia yesterday too because i wanted to and i did it but um it's so it's interesting like i think from so just speaking from my personal experience um like i don't go to like i okay lebron james has been in la for uh five years now five six years i've seen him play once right which mm -hmm. is to say like i don't go to a lot of games right like i just don't i don't have time i, I have three kids mm -hmm. right so i i don't have time to kind of go out there especially during the week and things of that nature uh but i did have a chance to go see uh marina play it was by coincidence um the tickets that i got Mar marina was there with dallas at the time and uh i have to say like i came back and I was like buzzing from it. Like I, I was telling people, like, I was like, listen, I, I know there's like a stigma with like the dunking thing. It's like, that's so annoying. Like, like I, I, I don't need to go to a basketball game and see a bunch of dunks. Right. Like I, I don't need that. Um, I, I want to see competitiveness. I want to see like high level of basketball. And that was like, it was, it was great. It, it was awesome. And, and like it helped Marina, like, it just I'm, I'm just gonna give you props right now like i was like watching you the whole time because we were courtside 10 to 13 on the game i showed you the box score before uh before we started uh and like you were so i've never seen anyone like even nba players like, i've never seen anyone so confident like shooting the three like you were ready to shoot like somehow you were shooting it before the ball got to you like you would get to spots like you would run to a certain spot on the floor and the balls go almost like the balls going up before you got it. And it was like, it's not, it's barely touching the net. Right. Mm -hmm. So like you played a great basketball game and it's just like, just to see like your competitiveness. And I kind of, I, I see it where Dara gets it too. Cause like, listen, you, you know, that's, you gave it to the ref, like kind of a lot right in the game and that's fine. Right. Like you're, you're uh, everyone has a, has, has a thing. And uh, it, but like, just the competitive nature of it, right? Like you were just, um, it was just high level play. Brittany Sykes was in the game. She played, she was, I, I, I was like she mesmerized by her. She was fantastic. She was like, like she, I, I, man, I was watching her in warmups too. I was like, is she ever going to miss? Like, so she, yeah. she played a great game. Uh -huh. uh, you're, you're, I remember in, that game. Oh man, it was, she was going crazy. Okay, so you remember the game. Yeah. Is it oh because so it was like I think it was the last game of the regular season or like one of the last games. Yeah. The Sparks were not gonna be a playoff team and you you guys were. Mm -hmm. That crowd was buzzing. Is it always like that? Uh at the Sparks Arena? Yeah. Yeah. I always joke around like it takes them to like the second quarter to really get like late in there because everybody's late. Yeah. But uh, <laughs> that's so true. Like, yeah, 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 like in traffic. But yeah. by the time like the second quarter hits, it's like lit in there. And the fans are really good and they're really into it and they love their Sparks players. Like they're really loyal. Um, so I always have a good time playing at the Sparks Arena. And obviously, of course, since I played there, um, they're always really cool and welcoming to me when I get there. Well, you you played a great basketball game. Good job by you. Um, but I was just like, I, I think just like getting people exposed to it is the thing because for me yeah. like I, I just like i don't get out that often but it's like I, man i like I, would i rather do that like i look at it from a, like what's what's more worth it like for me to do with my kids because if i can take my kids then it's like i can spend time with them they can get exposed to it you know and it's like it's mo it's so much more bang for your buck like going to your game than it would be like a lakers game which is yeah it can get it a just, little hectic we can get head thick. It's like super late. Like the game was in like, it was a, it was like a two o'clock tip or something of that nature. Okay. Right. So it was like very convenient. So I don't know. I, I just think getting more people exposed to it. Cause I, I'm telling you, I, I, I don't pander and I don't do that. That's not my thing. It was, it was a really great fun experience. Um, and then just to get back to like the, like the boom in college basketball. And I think one of the things with the women's game as compared to the men is like, like Notre Dame has Hannah right now. And it's like, it's nice to know, like, okay. I mean, she could with NIL and transfer portal and all that stuff. Like she could leave. I don't think you're going to see a lot of like great players leave the university of Notre Dame. I think Notre Dame, like fans can count on her. Like she's going to be around 
in, in, in men's game, a player like her, she's one and done. She's going to be gone, right? She's going to be around Notre Dame for, you know, three or four years, right? And so, like, you know you can count on that, right? Like, you know you can count on the team. If it's a young core, like, they're going to be around and they're going to be good. It's easy to follow, right? So Yeah, I, I think you can that's develop that relationship thing. between player and fan. Yeah, for sure. yeah, exactly. Yeah. Like, who doesn't want to watch Hannah? <laughs> well, uh, speaking of that, right? How closely are you? Do you follow the the women's team right now? I watch them whenever I can. I can't always watch it because it's late at night in Turkey. Right, right. But like when I can, I watch, and I always like go back and watch to see how they did. Like if I didn't see it, mm-hmm. and they've been killing. I'm proud of them. Uh, what what is your take on on Hannah? I mean, I don't know if there's a take oh, to Hannah's have. A but superstar. Just, yeah, like, she's a superstar. Like I've never seen somebody get that many steals. In my <laughs> and let alone be a freshman, like the girl gets the ball every time. Like she almost reminds me like Swiper the Fox. Like she's around, like pick the dang ball up and pass it because she's gonna steal it. But that and then just her motor, like her her competitive nature is like not matchable. You don't find that and it's not teachable. So when you yeah. see that in somebody, like you just gotta guide her. Like you don't want to ever tell her, like, no, don't do this, don't do that. Like you just got to guide her like this way, this way, this way. And she'll, she'll get there herself, but I'm excited to see what the future holds for her. Like she's a good player, like not good. She's great. Actually. I don't know why I said good, but yeah. She's <laughs> so <really good. laughs> I had uh coach Ivy on the, on the show before the season started and we were talking about her and you know, it's, it's kind of like, I, I don't really know how to gauge the, the hype train, I guess on a player. Uh, mm-hmm. it, it just, I, I don't know where that's coming from, but she was like, oh no, no, she's like a dog. Like she's awesome. Like, she's like, I yeah. never compare anyone to, to Skylar, but she's like Skylar. Mm-hmm. And I was like, yeah, okay. Right, right. Like I was, and when I asked her about, it, I, I thought, I thought, okay, like freshman coming in, you're going to want to temper expectations a little bit. It was the opposite. And then Dara, I talked to Dara the first time about her and she was like, no, like she's awesome. Like, I can't wait. Like, you'll just see. Everyone will see. And it, yeah. it's so rare for a player to like not just meet expectations but exceed them. Um yeah. that's that's she's amazing. I, I think she's probably the most competitive uh player on Notre Dame's campus right now. Mm-hmm. The, her fire is infectious. Like I I watching her is it's she's the kind of player where you just you just watch her. Even when she doesn't have the ball, whether when they're when you're they're defending, you're just watching. Her yeah, all I'll just be like staring at Hannah, play. like, "What is she doing over there?" Yeah, I do the same thing. <laughs> <laughs> so it's uh, it's unbelievable. Before I let you go, uh, tell me what what uh, what your take is on the women. How how how, what, what, how far do you think they can go this year? Uh, I could see them in the championship. Like I know that they had some injuries and stuff, but like you mm. got Hannah. You got Sony Citron, Citron, so she's she's amazing. Like I feel like she's like a Swiss Army knife. Like she yeah. comes in and she does her job every single night. You know what to expect from her. Um, she's great defensively too, in different ways. Like she keeps people in front of her. She makes it tough for people with her length. Then you got Maddie. Maddie's great. Like Maddie does a ton of things that don't step show up on the stat sheet all the time. So that's always good to have somebody that's willing to do that and score on top of it. So I really like Maddie in there for them and then obviously all of their role players too to me step up and do their job whenever they need it so um i know they'll take some time to gel and get get when they get all they got all their players back from injury that that they'll get back this season and then just kind of make chemistry like to me you just have to hit your stride in march and i'm biased i'm all go irish so i want them to win but i really think they could win all right. Sounds good. Well, thank uh, Marina. Thank you for coming on the show. Thank you for taking thank the you. time. Uh, yeah. Uh, it, uh, good luck on the rest of your season in Turkey and good luck in the WNBA. We'll be watching you and uh, we'll talk to you soon. All right. Thanks for having me.